there's this concept around when do we step into adulthood and the way that our society is constructed in this notion that from the age of if you're in the western culture um, in Europe in particular when you're at the age of 16 you get to have certain rights when you're 21 you get to have your full rights um, and some are 18 but so technically the age of 21 is marked um, significant in the western society as a as a mark of adulthood um, but the reality is 21 is not adulthood at all even though you know as we're as as uh, as you're aging <laughs> and as you hit 21 you feel like you know it all and you are a um vacuum of all knowledge that is simply not true um and the truth is really our 20s um we by the time we reach our 20s we've hit a time where we have um been molded and shaped by parental, societal, and cultural values, so much so, um, because we have been subjected to institutions, whether it's uh, it's university, school, parenting, that we really don't know who we are, um, and so it's quite interesting um, that we then continue this 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 with this blindfold of of um, navigating other people's expectations and living other people's expectations of of who we are and that can continue really until retirement of the age of 60. Um, and the reason why I love Greek philosophy so much uh, is that it really begins with the premise of know thyself and it's easy to say know thyself and we all think we know ourselves but we don't. <laughs> that's, the, that's the ultimate truth is that your entire life is spent trying to um, unmask and discover what it is and who it is that you are, what it is that you like, your nuances, your level of crazy um, and what that means. And, and, and we can undertake that process in a very conscious way or in an unconscious way. And, and what that means, the conscious way is examining what is it that I've learned? What is it that I like? What is it that I've lost? Which pieces of myself have I lost? And um, what do I need to reclaim back into who I am and reclaim my own personal sovereignty um, and release and let go and surrender? All these other uh, expectations that I have amassed over the, the decades of my life. Um, or you could do it unconsciously in terms of life tension, life giving you uh, the levels of tension and struggle and suffering to make you <laughs> become aware of what it is um, that you like and don't like and what you need to change and what you need to conform. And that can be a very, very difficult process for many who choose an unconscious path, um, including myself who lived that path for 40 years before actually thinking, well, no, there's got to be a better way that, you know, I can't continuously create these subconsciously create all these destructive patterns in my relationship work uh, love money etc etc there is um and so through that suffering it can lead you to the truth of who you are and what you like and what you know um what you really need to transform and release and surrender into a a, a higher version of yourself um and so again two paths neither is right or wrong one obviously uh, is a more conscious potentially less um uh, drenched in tension and suffering and the other um you you know you can create um this chain of reaction action reaction continuously um for many many years repeating the same cycle and destructive patterns without really um and, and then putting yourself in the place of victim and that's not a good place to be but it can you can easily step into that when you um continuously manifest that that kind of um experiences tough experiences that places you um in a space of powerlessness 
um, and one can understand why um, you lose your sense of power. And the whole journey of life is about really retaining your sense of sovereignty, your sense of power through the different experiences. But we lose a lot of our power, really, in life from a very young age where we are taught um, shame and to conform um, and to other people's expectations because of the level of shame that they uh, carry about certain conducts, starting with our parents. Um, and so we adopt those levels of pain and suffering and shame uh, as ours and we we internalize everything for the first seven years of our life we believe that everything is our fault everything we're unlovable we're undeserving we're unworthy um, and all of that gets really programmed within our subconscious every time we are taught not to do something or we're told off we put in a naughty corner or we you know told off um etc etc all of that is internalized um and and shatters a sense of uh personality um that then as an adult is there to protect you and lead you through life uh, but having that weakened and shattered and fragmented um is, is is not a good start and is not a good foundational lay and most of us have had that um and 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 it's just humanity how we are programmed to instill in others our own sense of values beginning with family beginning with culture beginning then with society and institutions um and we are like little robots believe it or not we are open for programming and we are programmed all through our life through our emotions and experiences and so what will at some point of your life come to force is what have I been programmed with? What level of trauma and shame and disgust and unworthiness am I carrying within my blueprint, within my personality and soul blueprint? And and how can I really start to heal and integrate those broken, fragmented aspects of myself that have experienced that trauma? And trauma is by no means an emotional uh, experience alone is a very somatic experience with, contained within your physical and your esoteric, energetic, mental, spiritual, emotional level. It's all levels of yourself that contains the emotional trauma. And trauma can be as very uh, minute as being left alone or ignored by your caregivers, you know, not intentionally, but because they were busy. And that can um, carry the blueprint of trauma. And so as we age, we, we, as we you know, and, and as we face different difficulties and struggles in our life, um, we want to make peace with that, obviously. And I think the world is in trauma. Every, um, we have so much propaganda beamed at us. We've got so much um, corruption at all levels in all of uh, societies across the Middle East, the West, the East, all of it. Um, and it really, there is a call for an internal integration, an internal alignment of all, everyone. You know, we're 7 billion people on this planet and the 7 billion people need help. But, you know, the first help starts with us and reclaiming the lost pieces of our um, soul and personality and to bringing that into harmonious integration. I, I do have a process for this. I have free material um, available on my website that you can easily download. Um, no commitment, just the commitment to yourself uh, for your own self-discovery and healing. I believe that once uh, the real change really happens from within, within individuals, there's 7 billion, again, people that are being controlled, mind controlled through propaganda and nonsense by a very few. Um, and it's time, I believe, in my heart of heart for people to rise from the depths of despair and delusion and illusion and to reclaim their individual power and in us doing so we can really shift and change this world this destructive insane world 
for the better, but it starts with you and it starts with me and it starts with us taking responsibility for our own sense of healing and traumas um, and integration, more importantly, because you cannot be a whole person going through life leading from one aspect of your entity, which is the personality, which is why most people are in survival mode why most people are struggling, why most people uh, are in despair and in grief and in anger and in rage is because they're leading from one very small aspect of themselves but you're so much more vaster, you're so much more, you contain so many different archetypal energies A within your personality construct and B within your soul construct but it takes analysis uh, self-reflection, contemplation, intention, prayer and uh, meditation and um, just attention if nothing else and that awareness alone is potent enough to evoke that integration that's necessary for, um, for a sense of alignment and peace. Um, that really starts with the self and I believe in my heart of heart that if we all do our work individually um, within our own lives and within our own selves that we can really evoke the worldwide change that is needed and desperate at this um, pinnacle um, of, of, of our 21st century where we have a choice to either go through this amazing evolutionary path of human consciousness or lead towards a path of complete destruction um, of, of, of this planet only for another civilization to emerge um, at our aftermath. It is not sustainable the way that we are going forward as humanity um, but I, I, I sincerely believe and know that every single one of us has the power to enforce um, this awareness into our life and, and therefore make the um, necessary change that is required for this amazing world that we're a part of at this time. And if we all work at awakening ourselves, awakening and integrating the different dimensional aspect of ourselves into oneness, then we can make that um, change together. Um, and topple the destruction and the destructive, corrupt forces that really few compared to the 7 billion of us, right? These are just few corrupt forces that will topple um, based on the work that we all individually do. So my prayer is that you um, share the templates if you find them useful. You can access them through my website, which is www.golden. Um, innervision.com they're absolutely free um, and no commitment other than the commitment to yourself required um, and it's my gift really to you um, for you to um, evoke that sense of peace and calm that is necessary for us to really harmoniously uh, go towards a better better world all my love and blessings